Hello, and let me make sure that my microphone is working this time, and welcome to the broadcast. Yes, it is. It looks like it is. Uh, and uh, hello and to welcome Tuesday. Ugh. Sorry, my brain is just frazzled. Uh, my new job, uh, I had to work a shift today, and I don't know why it kicked my ass as hard as it did. It was fine most of the day. I was feeling really good. And then I got a lot of notes from the managers, and I'm just like, oh, am I ever going to get this damn job right? <laughs> but it's it's fine. It's fine. I'm 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 more I'm more hectic and uh, critical of myself uh, than than the managers are. It's just I when I feel like I'm gaining ground. And then the reality sets in, and it's like, oh, I'm not as good as I think I am. I really thought I was doing good today. <laughs> oh, no, it's not the first day. This is uh, day number five. <laughs> I only have a couple of shifts per week right at the moment. It's kind of a, a slow uh, slow time, so uh, they're, I'm kind of just easing into the whole thing. But, uh, yeah, this is, this is actually my fifth shift. And, uh, yeah, I got another one, uh, not tomorrow, but uh, Thursday. And I'm like, eh. And I know, and I know, that's how every single job always goes. It's it's always rough for the first couple of weeks, but by the end of the first month, it's it's uh, it's good to go. And hello to uh, Danger Ranger 90 Thank you so much for joining me uh, during the pre-show. <laughs> A lot of times uh, people just join in once I've started the game. Um Today we're going to be playing some more Lawn Mowing Simulator, uh, mostly because I don't want to think. I just, I'm tired. As, as, uh, I got, there's a gnat flying around here. Um, so I got done, but I was actually done a little bit early, so that was kind of nice. And uh, unfortunately, um, right now, uh, the wife and I only have a single car, so... Uh, we, we both drive to drop me off and then she goes back home or does whatever shopping and everything and then she comes and picks me up. Well, because I was done early, she wasn't quite ready to go because uh, she's doing online classes and everything and that was there until, you know, so it was like, ah. But I was, I was done and I was like, I just, I have to get out of here. It's like just mentally I'm exhausted and I just want to go. Um, so I headed down the way and, and uh, was like heading towards the train and I was like, I'm just going to head this direction to see what it's like walking on foot if I ever have to take public transportation. And then uh, she, and then she, uh, wife picked me up and uh, she had some uh, uh, chicken McNuggets with her. And she, I'm a kid. She knows that. She knows what to do to make my day better. <laughs> so, so we went to the beach eating chicky nuggies and uh, barbecue sauce and... Things weren't all well, but they were already improving. So, yeah. I married right. <laughs> absolutely. Absolutely. Here's here's the thing. I tell her, treat me like I'm a friggin' 12-year-old. You will win. That's it. I'm easy. I'm an easy person to keep happy. That's it. That's all. I, I'm not going to make any major demands. I'm not going to say clean my house. I'm not going to say, you know, keep the garden tidy. I'm not doing any of that. <laughs> <laughs> I am literally, I am, I am, I'm a big goddamn kid. I always have been, and I'm going to be, I'm going to be the old guy at the retirement uh, community who is, uh, you know, uh, while everyone else is catatonic and everybody is all depressed and everything, I'm going to be, uh, you know, the, the, the ornery, ornery little shit in the corner who's causing troubles, but everybody loves because... Uh, you know, he's just an honorary little shit and he hasn't just given up on life. I don't know. <laughs> Odds are I'll have a friggin', you know, uh, four, uh, four chamber coronary and then I'll be just laying in a bed because I don't have the ability to do anything else. That's the reality. <laughs> And on that lovely, lovely note, hello to R Signs 90. Good to see you along. Right, exactly. All the boomers will be playing their video games and I'll be there. What I want to be is I want to be the senior citizen who's still streaming. That's what I want to be. I want to be up there and say, Okay, so we're going to play some Contra from the NES. I used to be able to kick the shit out of this game, but now I, I haven't had my pudding yet. So it's, it's hard to say what's going to happen. 
What? Huh? Whoa! Well, what? What the hell? <laughs> Is Jimmy Carter back in office? I don't know. Jimmy Carter was never in office during my life. <laughs> Oh, our signs not feeling well physically, mentally, unfortunately. Oh, well, that stinks. That stinks. It's, it, you know, uh, you, you got to take those mental health days. Uh, I did not do that in my young adult life. And uh, I only recently uh, realized that. And I'm one of those persons who's a major, uh, major proponent of um, being able to take a day off for mental health. Not because I'm sick. I just want to get the hell out of here and go do something and flip the circuit breakers. I'm a big fan of that movement and everything. I think it should be a legitimate reason, uh, but sometimes I think people should be able to play hooky. You know, here in Australia, they have a phrase, chuck a sicky. That means they're playing hooky. It's like part of the culture, you know? <laughs> hey, look at that! And uh, Brett is along for the... Ma Man, I've got everybody in this show! <laughs> exactly, exactly. I quit a job because uh, it was destroying me... Uh, uh, it was destroying my mental health. I was having panic attacks. I couldn't sleep for eight hours at a time. I'd sleep for two hours, wake up, and I'm sweating. My heart was... And I was like, I, I, I went into my job one day and I was like, I have had my fill. I went home, talked to my wife about it, and I, I couldn't sleep that night. I got up at three in the, I got out of bed at three in the morning and I uh, went into the office, cleared out everything, took everything, took all of my digital files and, 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 and everything. And then when my shift started that morning at eight o'clock, I walked in on my boss's room, uh, office, laid the key on her desk and said, I quit and just walked out. I didn't give any notice, didn't give any heads up. There was nobody had any idea that I was doing that. And that rotten bitch actually had the audacity to text me about two hours later saying I needed to make an official resignation and it took every ounce of my strength not to send her an image like this I never did I never bothered I'm like I'm not under contract you can kiss my ass I'm gone oh and the thing is I loved that job I loved that job but I'm glad I had it because a lot of what I used and what I learned that was when I was working in radio a lot of what I learned is translating into video production and um, being able to do my YouTube channel now and everything and, 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 and being able to, you know, broadcast and do what I'm doing right now. So what I learned in a job that they eventually took all the fun out of is now translating into something that could maybe become a career, something to just give me a little bit of money at the end of the month. That's all. Anyway, so now that we got a uh, major uh, group of people here. Oh, by the way. Oops, wrong picture. Uh, I'll, I'll leave that one up there. That's the wrong image. I had to change the image right there. Uh, but uh, the, oh, 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 there we go. The actual image right there, Sugar Pants Video Basement. We're in between seasons, uh, but don't let that uh, fool you because there is more on the way. We are only halfway done with the uh, year's uh, 24 episodes. 12 episodes are out, 12 episodes still on the way, and they're all done. They are all finished. They are just waiting for their launch date. So be watching in about six weeks. Um, it, I know it's a weird amount of time in between, but I, I had to do it to space them out and everything. But year two is a much better uh, timeline for uh, release days. Oh, I keep hitting the wrong thing. <laughs> I do love that picture. It's a great photo. We had a, uh, had a great uh, photo um, uh, photo session trying to get all the promotional stuff and everything. Okay. Let's switch on over to the broadcast, and I'm going to kick back and relax. So for anybody who hasn't been watching <clears throat> here lately, last night, <laughs> nightmare fuel, exactly. Uh, if, if anything, I think Sugar Pants is uh, a friendly enough guide to the world of trash uh, movies and everything. Um, I, I try very much not to be a, a direct ripoff of the Crypt Keeper, but very similar, like like... If the Crypt Keeper had like a um, uh, had like a poker night, I'd like to think that Sugar Pants would be invited. <laughs> Maybe someday I'll become that. Okay, so last evening I was able to get some uh, major money, but by doing jobs that I was not 
capable of uh, uh, actually handling very well. So uh, going into our garage, oops, hang on a second, I got something. Uh, oh, 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 I know what I forgot to do. Hang on one second. I forgot to uh, mute my TV. Okay, so what I'm like, what I would like to get is this thing right here. This is the next mower uh, upgrade. If it wants to load, and look at this beauty. Oh, it's so shiny, shiny and orange and black. <laughs> well, I'm sorry to hear that, Danger Ranger. <laughs> If it makes you feel better, I don't like mowing the lawn in real life, but I like the game. Uh, this is what I've got right now, and that's the upgrade. So uh, I need about $500, more or less. About $600 will get the job. Uh, it will get the uh, upgrade there. So we're going to go in, and we're going to take the, uh, the garden at Miller Brook. Uh, they recommend 120 uh, mowing deck. Mine has 122, so it's a little bigger, but that's fine. All right, we'll confirm that. And off we go into the wild blue yonder of loading screens. <laughs> Bro, I don't care. <laughs> oh, yeah, you know, sometimes, sometimes, you know, people are passionate about something, and that's great, but they have to sometimes realize that People aren't always interested in that. You know, I, I have friends who are, you know, fascinated with fishing. Great. I don't care. <laughs> I, I don't, I've never been a fan of fishing. I'm, I don't dislike it. It's just, if I have the time to fish, I'd rather be doing anything else. <laughs> to me, fishing feels like I didn't have anything to do and I'm still not going to do anything. Every time I go fishing, that's what it feels like. It's nice when I do it. I like being out in the nature and everything, but it's like, out of all the things that I could choose to do, fishing is never even a thought. Okay. So, let's get in here. We got three objects that we have to find in the tall grass. Oh, look at that. Man, that would have just wrecked my mower. Who leaves trimmers just laying in the grass like that? Okay. Well, that's just the thing. Sometimes I do, sometimes I don't. You know, I, I don't think that I catch any fish, you know, when I do go fishing. It's not that I it's not that I don't catch anything. It's just I don't know. I know I know it, the point of fishing is not the actual fishing. It's just I don't know. It just feels like one of those things that Oh, that's only two. I thought I had three for some reason. Um, fishing always just feels like... I don't know. I don't know. It's just... It feels like we didn't have a plan and we're just going to stick with it. You know, you know what I mean? If you like it, great. You know, but for me, it always feels like, it always feels like, you know, when you go out with a group of friends, they're like, what do you want to do? I don't know. What do you want to do? I don't know. What do you want to do? I don't know. What do you want to do? Well, I guess we're fishing. That's what it feels like to me. I'm just like, I, I just, I'd rather just do anything else. You know, let's go bowling. Let's go play mini golf. You know, if we're, if we're not going to accomplish anything, because we're not fishing. Anytime I've gone fishing, it's been with people who, they're not going to be catching it to make it for dinner, you know? And it's like, to me, that's like, I don't know. You guys go do your thing. I'll just stay home and masturbate. <laughs> At least I'll be accomplishing something. <laughs> I don't know if that's too gross or what, but, you know, whatever. Well, look at the time. <laughs> you know, and, and I just... You know, but that's that's just what I'm saying. It's like fishing is it's not a bad activity. It's just if I had absolutely nothing else to do, I'd be all for it. But there's all to me there's always something to do. 
But I'll say this much. I think it's fucking ridiculous people watch fishing shows. You know? I'm 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 gonna die on that hill. I think fishing shows are fucking ridiculous. It's like it's just I don't I don't get it. I don't get fishing shows. You know, you see a bunch of guys sitting in a boat, pulling fish in and throwing them right back. Do you just have nothing else to watch? It's like, to me, it's like, fishing is, fishing, fishing is fine. But then you watch other people fish. It's like, just say you don't want to do dick all today. Just stop bullshitting me. Well, I'm going to go watch a fishing show. No, you're not. You're going to do nothing. <laughs> hey, goddammit, I'm accomplishing something in this game because every time I do, I get money that I use to upgrade my digital uh, mowing empire. So that is something. <laughs> again, again, if you like fishing, great, more power to you. I'm not going to tell you you're dumb for it. But if you want to, if, but if you don't fish and you just watch fishing shows, I'm going to go ahead and say you're dumb. <laughs> Oh, 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 oh. Mower's a little jittery today. <laughs> what if I could play this game and fish at the same time? Then I'm just playing the game. <laughs> That's too funny. Maybe. I don't know. I don't know. Let me just go ahead and say that when I did go fishing, it was enjoyable. It just... It just... All I could think of is... There's so many other things in this in, that I could be doing today that actually feel productive. And maybe that's the point, you know? Maybe the point is fishing is not supposed to be productive. I don't know. All right. What is our mowing height? 5.5 uh, to 6.5. There we go. All right. Lower the head. The cutting deck. And off we go. I will say this much. My dad was a huge fisherman. And he never took me. The times that he did take me, it was always bad. I'll, I'll, I'll at least say that much. Maybe it's maybe it's psychological, you know? It's just, I, anytime my dad would take me fishing, which was almost never, it always ended up being, you know, what's going to piss him off today? So maybe that has something to do with it. But uh, my dad was not a very happy individual. Quite violent, actually. So, um, but I had some friends in my adult years who uh, took me fishing and everything, and, and yeah, it's, it's, it's okay. Now, hunting, though, I'm okay. I'm, a, I'm, much, I'm much more uh, hunting, you know? But when I'm hunting, I'm trying to find something to eat. I'm not trophy hunting. I don't believe in trophy hunting. I believe if you're hunting, you better be trying to put something on the table. And uh, that's, that's my hardline stance on hunting. Now, if I get a trophy because of it, like, say, I shoot a deer and I make a bunch of deer sausage and the antlers are left over, I'm putting them on my wall. Sure, absolutely. But those antlers are just, just going to be a reminder of the delicious sausage that I got. Pheasant hunting. Yes, I've been pheasant hunting before. Uh, dove hunting for me. Uh, I love dove hunting. When they're in season, man, they are a tasty... There's not a lot of meat on them, but they are a tasty, tasty little bird. But, uh, yeah. And and with fishing and everything, it's like, I don't know, if you're going to yank the fish out of the uh, ocean or whatever... Now, now, I'll say that much. Where I'm at right now, I've got ocean and everything. I would like to try ocean fishing. I'd like to try that. There's a lot of really good fishing spots. In fact, after I got off work today... Uh, the, the wife and I drove down to the uh, to the ocean, uh, and it was low tide on the rocks, and there were a lot of fishermen out there, and uh, they were they were really really going at it. 
uh, casting, pulling in and everything, and yeah. <laughs> no, no, no. Fisher Foods. Possibly friends. <laughs> right, exactly. Unless it's something like a puffer fish, and I don't know how to prepare that. Uh, but puffer fish are so adorable. You know, a lot of a lot of a lot of times when people talk about puffer fish, they're all like, "Oh my God, it's so horrible and everything." It's like, yeah, when they're in defensive mode, but when they're just swimming around in the shallows, my God, they're an adorable, chubby little fish. <laughs> yeah. Well, you can legally catch them here. They just have to be of the right size. You got to make sure that they're the size limit, and you don't uh, you don't go all, uh, over the uh, uh, the catch limits. I'll tell you what fish I really like uh, since getting uh, since moving to Australia is the blue grenadier. Oh, that is a tasty, tasty fish. If I, if I was to go fishing for some blue grenadier, yeah, I'll be doing some fish fry after that. Uh, a lot of times when I go to the fish and chips shop, uh, blue grenadier is uh, the fish, it, it's, it's an option. It batters up really nicely. It, it kind of... It kind of has a carp flavor. <clears throat> if you've ever had carp, it kind of has a carp flavor, but uh, you know, a little bit more, a little bit more, you know, salty from the sea. But, uh, but I really like it. Yeah, yeah, and, and see, and that's where I lived was I was in Kansas. But see, yeah, crap. <laughs> Carp is, um, but well, but see, the carp is a stronger flavor than the grenadier. The grenadier is like just kind of pushing towards that, and and I always liked carp, but um, I, I uh, most of the time it was just catfish where I was at. It was all catfish, and uh, if you caught a decent enough perch, uh, some bullheads. Um, that's about it. I uh, we had some pretty decent sized rivers, uh, so there were always uh, catfish tournaments. And uh, my God, the monsters, the monster catfish that they would pull out of that river. Uh, gar, gar is delicious, but you got to have a redneck who knows how to cook the damn thing. <laughs> I don't know if you're familiar with what a gar is, but uh, it is an ugly, ugly fish. But if if you get a if you get a uh, you know hillbilly who knows how yeah okay so you know what I'm talking about yeah it's just it's just the uh, it's just the jaws of an alligator and the body of a long ass fish. But, uh, and, and, and you can't catch them with hooks. You gotta catch them with like, uh, tassels. When I, uh, when, uh, when my uh, redneck friend uh, sh showed, uh, came back with the Hall of Gar, uh, he was showing me the, uh, the lure that they use. And it looks like a, um, the tassel that hangs off of a mortar board uh, when you're, um, uh, when you graduate. Yeah, <laughs> and that's what's great about nature, you know. But the thing is, is you know, when you, when you see them out in the in the wild and everything, you're all like, "Who the fuck would even think to eat that?" Well, the people that I grew up with. <laughs> but they're delicious if you know what you're doing. The problem with gar is they are so tough. What you have to do is you have to. Uh, cut up the meat into small cubes, and then you put them in a uh, jar of lemon pepper, uh, lemon juice and pepper, and you marinate them for three goddamn days. 
and then it gets, you know, to the point that you can actually eat it. So, yeah. <laughs> it's funny, I was actually talking to one of my uh, new co-workers about this. Uh, we got talking about uh, where I used to live and uh, all the, uh, you know, uh, all the... Uh, Well, lemon pepper, what I mean by that is, is lemon juice and peppercorns. Peppercorns just for flavoring, but the lemon juice, uh, it, it also flavors, but it, it, it softens the meat because of the acid. But he, what, what my friend would do is he would take a jar, fill it with the, uh, the gar meat, and then fill it up with lemon juice and peppercorns, and then he'd swap it out every day. So it was always, it was always fresh. Because you had to clean the meat too. It was just filthy, filthy, nasty fish meat. But yeah, once it got prepared, it was very tasty. Oh, I just saw our signs. I just saw you asking about it being cured. Um, you know, I'm I'm guessing that if you did, it probably could be, but. Like I said, it, it just just soaking it in lemon juice for three days seemed to do the trick. <laughs> so my uh, my friend uh, he would actually call it river chicken because it actually kind of had a chicken sort of flavor once once you ran through with the lemon juice and everything. A little gamey, but the one thing I thought was weird about the uh, meat was uh, every once in a while there'd be like a a ribbon of like tendons. Through it, it wasn't like solid tendons, but there would be like a ribbon of you know really chewy, uh, not quite cartilage or anything, but yeah, just just something that probably should have been cut out, but eh. it's it's really tasty. Um, but again, it's it has a lot of prep work. So if someone's going to make it, they need to they need to you know make it ahead of time. But because I grew up with a lot of, you know, back hills, uh, rednecks, I also had access to a lot of foods that probably don't sound really good at first. But eh, if they, but again, if you know what, if the person who's cooking it knows what they're doing, it's pretty tasty. Uh, squirrel and raccoon. I've eaten both. <laughs> and uh, raccoon, I gotta say, is a magical meat. That first bite is the worst bite you'll ever have. After that, every bite gets better. And I don't know how that works. Uh, a friend of mine uh, brought it in, uh, brought in a, um, a uh, slow cooker that he had been cooking for like two or three days. Because again, really tough meat. <laughs> and um, he just brought it in and said, give that a try. And I tried it and I'm like, oh God, what is that? That is so... That is so gaming. He's like, it's raccoon. I'm like, you're shitting me. What is it? He's like, no, it's raccoon. It's, I swear to God, it's raccoon. And I tried it again, and I, uh, you know, I tried a few bites of it, and I'm just like, oh, God, it's so gamey. How do you eat that? And he's like, oh, it's not that bad. It's, you know, just a little bit of sauce on it and everything. And then uh, a few minutes went by. Yes, yes, it is very greasy. I will say that. It is a very greasy meat. But uh, after a few minutes, I sat there and I was just like, let me try a little bit more. Suddenly I had the, the, I had the taste for it. And then I, I tried it and I was like, okay, I'm going to go get me a plate. <laughs> so I got a little bit more and, and I had a little bit and I was just like, oh my God, this just gets better every time you take a bite of it. How does that work? Cow doesn't even do that. Cow, pig, and chicken, they don't get better every bite. First bite is as good as it's ever going to get. Raccoon, it gets better and better. Yeah! <laughs> wink, wink, nudge, nudge, snap, snap, grin, grin, say no all. <laughs> all you two goers! Uh, look, fella, I don't know exactly what you're talking about. Don't I know it! <laughs> uh, if I can always turn it back to a Monty Python bit, I will always try. <laughs> uh, but uh, raccoon, or not raccoon, squirrel. Squirrel is 
surprisingly tasty. There's just not a lot of meat on it. So my my friend would he would roast it, and uh, he came over, and I was like, uh, "So what's for dinner tonight?" And he was like, "Sweet and sticky squirrel." I beg your pardon. He's like, "Sweet and sticky squirrel." And he pulled the pan out, and it's just squirrels laying down. All he did was chop their feet off and skin them. And I'm like, "Aha!" Uh -huh. And how do we eat these? Over rice. <laughs> So yeah, so these these squirrel carcasses were just laying in the pan side by side. You know, took the head off, took the feet off, and then just skinned them. That's it. That's all he did. And then he cooked them in this sweet and you know this sweet and tangy sour sauce. I don't know what it was. I've never had it again. But the the meat and the sauce and it all it just it was really good. The only the real bad thing about eating squirrel is you gotta it's just all these tiny little bones. So when you're done, you have this pile, and it's just you feel like you feel like you've just you know spent some time with like a serial killer or something. There's just a pile of bones, just these tiny little bones, and you're like, what is this guy doing in his basement? <laughs> oh. Wow, hang on a second. How did why is redneck? Redneck was a censored term. Redneck ain't a word, or ain't a bad word. <laughs> Jeff Foxworthy told me so. <laughs> if your mother can tell the uh, highway patrol man to kiss her ass without taking the cigarette from her mouth, you might just be a redneck. <laughs> if your family tree does not fork, you might be a redneck. <laughs> if your gun rack has a gun rack, you might be a redneck. <laughs> oh, I miss I miss Jeff Foxworthy. Where did he go? I think he just put up a, um, a Netflix uh, comedy special uh, a few weeks back. I think. Um. It's not, uh, it's, it's not exactly the same vein, but when I was working in radio, I did get to interview Bill Engvall. And that was cool. Bill Engvall was a real nice guy. I uh, got to introduce, got to introduce uh, Joe Diffie to a crowd uh, at a concert venue. That was nerve-wracking. Um, I got to meet Rodney Carrington backstage. He was a nice guy. Rodney Carrington was a super nice guy. I don't know if I don't know if he was just having a good day that night, but we went backstage, had some backstage all access passes, and uh, he is a tiny dude. I think he's like five feet nothing. And uh, but he was he was a nice guy. He was real thrilled to find out that I married my wife because. Uh, I put on one of his uh, comedy specials, and she was on the floor laughing her ass off. And I'm just like, I think I'm going to marry this girl. <laughs> I think the joke was um, he was up on he was up on stage talking about his wife, and this was the comedy special uh, where my wife was uh, where I was where I found out my wife's sense of humor. And um, the, he gets up there, and he was like. Uh, he was like, uh, I know us men fart a whole lot, but women, you, 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 sometimes you don't hide it very well that you fart too. Hell, my wife got in the cab of the truck the other day and her ass went squirrel. <laughs> she looks at me and, and was like, what? And I'm just like, don't you what me? I think your ass just said a word. <laughs> so that whole routine, my wife was just laughing at. So when we had a chance to meet, uh, Rodney Carrington backstage. Uh, he just came went, came down the line and just met everybody. And I was like, Rodney, I wanna I wanna um, thank you for uh, basically being the reason that I'm married to this gal right here. And he just kind of gave me this grin and was like, well, How's that? And he wanted to know the story. And I said, We were watching one of your specials, and I found her love of dick and fart jokes, and it was because of you. And I was like. I need to marry this gal. And my wife was so embarrassed. She was just shaking her head. She didn't say anything about the whole thing. And he just looked at me and he was like, 
Well, all right. I'm glad that I was able to help. And he was so cool about it. Shook his hand. We got some photographs with him. And, you know, he really wanted to talk to everybody before the show. And, and you know, it wasn't one of those, hey, how you doing? Shake your hand, get a photograph, move on down the line. It wasn't like that. It was really cool. He just, he wanted to have just a short little conversation with everybody. So I always give him credit. I know he ran into some tough times and I know he's, I know he's, uh, you know, with the redneck, uh, you know, the comedy routines and everything, and, and they're all worship of Trump and everything, but all that shit aside, one-on-one, -on -one, I thought he was a decent celebrity. So, take that for what it's worth, but I thought he was really cool, and he went out and did an okay show that night. <laughs> it wasn't a great show, but I enjoyed it. I should dig up that photograph I got of him. It's, it's, it's hanging around somewhere. But you always like when, because because this was, when I met him, he had already like hit his major popularity. So it wasn't like he was up and coming. You know, he had, he had already had many, many albums that had sold a lot. He had already done work with Toby Keith and all that shit. He, I think he had done some uh, acting uh, in some in some low-budget movies, too. So he was not like an up-and-comer. So he didn't, he didn't have to. Well, but that's just the thing. It's like, you know, whatever you want to be politically, that's fine. But some people turn it into, you know, it has to be one way or the other. And it doesn't have to be. But anyway, that's, um, I will say this much, Joe Diffie, however, was disappointing. He wasn't like a diva or a jerk or anything, but when, when, when I did with his, when I went with his meet and greet, it was very much walk up, take a photo, move on. I never got a chance to say two words to the guy, and I was introducing him to, uh, to the crowd. I was literally emceeing his concert, and I didn't get to talk to him. <laughs> he put on a great show, don't get me wrong, but... Um, I was disappointed that his meet and greet was so by the book, cut and dry, boom, bam, wham, bam, move on to the next thing. I was a little disappointed in that. Oh, Tracy Lawrence. I always forget that I also met Tracy Lawrence, too. Uh, unfortunately, I didn't get the, uh, I had a photograph with him, and I somehow did not get that. I don't know how that happened. And I'm upset with that, because Tracy Lawrence is a hell of a country star. I always liked Tracy Lawrence. And he was a cool guy. He was he was backstage cracking jokes and everything before the show. We all had the um, we had the uh, catered uh, catered service and everything. But uh, yeah, Tracy Lawrence Tracy Lawrence was was really good. Uh, but he also put on a show, and I swear to God, he sounds just as good alive as he does on album. You know, sometimes you go and see a show, and, oh, Rosario Dawson would be cool. Um, I, I do like her. But, uh, you know, sometimes you go and see a concert, and, you know, the person who's uh, performing, they don't sound as good. You know, and Tracy Lawrence, God bless him, he had been... He had already he had hit, he had all of his hits in the '90s. I saw him in the mid 2000s, you know. So he was already he had already been out, and uh, and it was like you know 10, 15, 20 years past his you know the major hits that we all know and love. And he got up on that stage, fucking sound just like his album. And I was just like, wow, he is really good. But he was a, he was a cool dude, and uh, I just I re that's the one photograph that I did not have a copy of, and I don't know how that happened. Shit, I, I'm suddenly remembering all these people that, you know, because I was in radio for 14 years, and I've just, some of these stories I just have never told. Um, Carrie Underwood. I, I got to go backstage and meet Carrie Underwood, and she was another one of those, stand here, get your photograph. I tried to make conversation. She was having none of it, and just down the line, move on. Just get them through as fast as possible so that I can go back to my trailer before I actually go on stage. And I was, I was disappointed. I was disappointed like that. Now, that one, I did find the photograph uh, there. So, Tracy Lawrence is the only one that I don't have the photograph of, and I wish I did. But, yeah. Carrie Underwood. 
I don't know if maybe she was just having a bad night or something, but yeah, it was it was kind of disappointing. But she is a tiny gal. <laughs> when I was living in uh, when I was living back in the states, there was a uh, there was a um, a pizza place that I used to go to in uh, Topeka, and um, it was a deep dish Chicago uh, Chicago style, and I found out that I love me some Chicago style deep dish. Uh, the only problem is, is it took so long to cook. It, it, you really, you really, if you were going there, you were there for a while. But I would go there, and I, I had a chance to meet the, uh, the owners and operators and everything, and chat with them, and they were really nice people. And uh, they had um, in uh, Topeka, they would have uh, like Comic Con and uh, the Horror Con uh, conventions and everything coming through town. And um, one of the persons that, and I asked him, I said, have you ever had any celebrities come through? And she was like, oh yeah. And immediately she went to, um, oh dang it, what is his name? Uh, he is, he's a Hispanic actor. He's, he was in Machete. I can't think of his name. Um, uh, he, was, he was in Breaking Bad. Uh, for a couple of episodes, um, but yeah, he was Danny Trejo. Thank you. Yes, Danny Trejo. So they were like, "Yeah, Danny Trejo comes by every time he comes through town," and I'm just like, "No shit!" And they were like, "He is such a nice guy," and uh, it was like uh, every time he comes by, he buys everybody's food at the uh, at the restaurant, and um, he's always uh, you know, and, and but he doesn't tell anybody. He just goes up, pays for everybody who's there, and just walks out the door without any thanks or anything. I'm like, that's really cool. <laughs> well, it's, it's not like he's the only Hispanic actor, but um, he, he seems to be everywhere. You know, and, and I gotta say, he is a rough-looking dude. He has had one hell of a career for being... You know, who, who basically looks like someone cut a roast on his face. <laughs> but the people who uh, own the uh, the pizza place, they, they had nothing but nice things to say about him. So that he's very, exactly, very humble. He's, he, uh, he's the type of celebrity who remembers that it's the fans that put him there. And, you know, he remembers what it was like before he was a celebrity and uh, does his best to try and uh, help out others and everything. And I was like, that's how you want to hear it. Those are the stories you want to hear. Now, me personally, I never had a chance to meet him, but um, if I had the chance to, I sure would like to. He seems like a pretty cool guy. I actually, uh, I went to a horror convention one time. I've never been one for conventions because I kind of lived in the middle of nowhere and they were, they didn't really start coming around and being popular uh, until it was almost time for me to leave the country. And, you know, comic cons are one thing, but uh, horror cons and sci-fi cons, those are, you know, different things too. But uh, a buddy of mine, uh, took me to a horror convention, which was a lot of fun, and I didn't know who was supposed to be there, and I actually had a chance to see Linda Blair. I didn't, we, I didn't meet her. I wish I had, but um, it, her her session was booked uh, all up, and I didn't get a chance to get in line. But I got to see there, so uh, so uh, she's probably the highest level celebrity I've ever actually seen. So I didn't get to meet her. But I got to see uh, Linda Blair eat spaghetti. <laughs> she was in between sessions, and she was she had a a, a plate uh, or a um, uh, styrofoam container full of spaghetti, and she was just eating and everything, just waiting for her next session of photographs and and uh, autographs and all that. And um, everybody that I saw who met her, I was like, "What was she like?" And she was like, "Oh, she's so nice. She's so nice." And, and the, the convention that we were at was in a very, not a very big town. 
It wasn't like Kansas City or Topeka or anything like that. And, and she was part of the, the group and everything. I'm like, that's really cool. So I wish I had, but I didn't know she was going to be there. So it was a weekend long thing. And, and the day we went, it was, yeah, when, when Linda Blair was there. Uh, but my friend who took me to the horror convention, he uh, has actually met... Um, Oh, dang it, what is his name? He has played Jason more time. Kane Hodder. He, he actually has a photograph with Kane Hodder. So he's sitting next to Kane Hodder, and Kane has his hand around the, my friend's face and is, like, grabbing him by his jaw and just kind of, you know, like, like a Jason sort of a thing. <laughs> Let's see. Uh, Josh That's cool. You know, I, w I think Corey... I've, I've seen Corey Taylor in interviews. I think uh, I think he could be a... I think Corey Taylor is that kind of guy who has the capacity to be an, an, uh, an incredible dick. But in a lot of interviews, he comes off as someone who can be incredibly cool. So I don't know. I, I think Corey Taylor would be pretty cool from Slipknot. I was really into Slipknot for a long time uh, in the early 2000s. Okay. Well, yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> Sometimes it sucks when you meet him on a bad day. But, you know, other times it's like, yeah. It's like he can be an asshole, but is he an asshole all the time? Iowa, yes, Iowa was a great album. <clears throat> okay, so how did we do? We had, we were supposed to get 460 and we ended up with 493 Not too bad. We had $2.50 worth of collisions. I don't remember hitting anything, but eh, what can you do? And uh, did we level up? Yes, our credibility rank has gone up to rank number five. Next up, we're going with established rank one. Oh, okay, that makes sense, yeah. I'm assuming that means that uh, they were from Iowa. <laughs> it would be weird to have an album called Iowa if you weren't from there. But I've seen weirder things. Okay, uh, let's see if our if it's enough to be able to trade in. No, not quite. Okay, this costs 8480 We have 3700 Four, five, six, seven. Oh, ah, yeah, we're, we're, we're very close, though. I think one more job we might be able to get it. What is that? Four, five, six, seven, eight. So we're at 83 Oh, we're like less than a hundred away. Oh my God. Okay. All right. Well, let's let's do a little bit of maintenance on our uh, machine. Holy shit! Seventeen dollars. I think that's the most uh, expensive vehicle repair. Engine repair twenty. What the hell? I wonder if I forgot to do the uh, repairs after last night's job. I might have done. Yeah, this might be two jobs worth. Denzel Washington? I don't know if I've heard any stories about Denzel. So I don't know if I've ever heard... Um, sometimes uh, sometimes I'll, I'll be on like Reddit and they'll have a, a thread where they're talking about uh, celebrities. And they're like, who's the best celebrity that you met? Who's the worst celebrity you ever met? And I hate to say it, I have heard so much shit against Will Ferrell. And I don't, I don't get where that comes from at all. That dude... Yeah. Tom Hanks. Yes, I hear a lot of good things about Tom Hanks. I hear a lot of shit about Will Ferrell. <laughs> but I hear Tom Hanks is a really cool, really cool guy. Yeah, I, I know. And Will Ferrell seems like one of those persons who you would think would be pretty cool, pretty decent. I'm not a huge fan of his movies. There's a couple of them that I like all right, but um, some of them I'm just like, ugh, that's pretty dreadful. Um, but um, I've I've heard that uh, a lot of a lot of people uh, a lot of people's stories, and and you got to take them with a grain of salt because you never know. But the thing that's funny is is you know when you're on a thread and there's you know thousands of people who have commented and and you know uh, tens of thousands of upvotes and everything, you feel like some of these stories would be refuted, but when it's someone like Will Ferrell, it's like all you see is all you see is like negative stuff, and it's like ah oh, well that's a shame. Like no one has ever said you know, why they think Will Ferrell may have had a bad day that day or something like that. You never see, like, the counter story. It's just everybody has a bad story about Will Ferrell. <laughs> I don't know. 
<clears throat> oh boy, I tell you, I really would like to do this one, but this one takes such a long time and I'm so close to leveling up. I'm, I'm going to pick one that has like a low complexity. This one right here, $325 I think should get me. So yeah, we're going to punk out and do a uh, an easy job. <clears throat> I don't know if I've ever actually done this job before. Um, but uh, I don't know. Uh, sometimes sometimes uh, when the question comes out, they're like, what celebrity would you like to meet? And our signs we now know is Tom Hanks, which would be really cool. Um, I don't know. If I had, out of all the world of celebrities, naturally the people who are just alive, you know, we're not going to get into the people who have passed away. But out of all the people who are alive, if I had a chance to meet a celebrity, boy. I'm kind of glancing at some of my movies to try and maybe get some ideas. I don't know. Part of me feels like John Carpenter would be, would be a really great sit down and, and kind of you know, let's have, um, yeah, my mower being, <laughs> yeah. I feel like John Carpenter would be a great person to, oh, wow, I, I have never done this yard before. Huh. I've never, yeah, I've never done this one before. But I think, I think, you know, like, John Carpenter would be one of those persons that if you went to, like, a, a little cafe and you just shot the shit, I think John Carpenter would have a lot of stories to tell, um, and I feel like um, I feel like like he's the type of storyteller who you get him started, he'll go all day, sort of thing. All right, so let's go in here. Uh, we got four minutes to check the grid. Where the hell are we? I wonder if that's part of the yard that we have to do. Oh, okay. All right. I was afraid that we were going to have to drive over the pool. I'm like, how the hell am I going to get into this yard? Yeah, we're going to have to do some edging. I don't know if... I don't, I don't think this is part of the job, this grass here. Nope, it's part of it. It's part of it. I don't think I can get my mower in here. That's kind of a bullshit move. Because it sucks doing a large area with the trimmer. Nope, <laughs> it's yeah, already got me up to 2% here. Because it's so easy to miss a bunch of grass with this. Yeah, I've I've never done this job before. This one's a this one's a weird one. So yeah, um, yeah, I think I think John Carpenter would be interesting, but I think he'd be I think he'd be a pretty cool guy to chat with too. Um, I don't think he'd be one of those egotistical jagoffs who um, wouldn't want to talk about his career and answer questions and everything like that from someone who's just star-studded and everything, because there's so many of his movies that I love. I'm even going into some of the, the deeper cuts that were really the, you know, like the cult favorites, not the ones that are all about, uh, you know, crowd-pleasing and everything. Yeah, look at, look at that hack job. Hello, ma'am. Do you have time to talk about our Lord and Savior, uh, Cthulhu? E.I. E.I. Cthulhu for talking? Hello? 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 <laughs> all right. Ugh, look at all that. Ugh, I'm, I'm, I'm gonna, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna worry about it anymore. All right, let's go and get some of the, uh, the narrow stuff. Ah, look at this bullshit. <laughs> well, she can go right ahead and call the Bobbies. Oh, I'm just out with the lorry. Can I fall into the pool? 
Hey, assholes in there. I'm in your pool and I'm really mucking it up. I didn't wash my boots. <laughs> uh, I'm getting goofy. Alright, easy there. Let's not take out the flowers. I need to get a better, uh, better, uh, edger. Okay, is there anything else? Yeah, there's a bunch of shit back here, too. This is probably the most edging that I think I've ever had to do in this game. <laughs> Buzz, I'm going through your stuff! You better come out and pound me! <laughs> no clothes on anybody! Sickening! <laughs> <laughs> Buzz, your girlfriend! Woof! <laughs> you know, I actually found out that is a boy in a wig. They couldn't, they didn't want, it's like John Hughes, I think, did not want to have an actual girl up there, so they got a boy who was willing to put on a wig and make a goofy face. <laughs> Keep the change, you filthy animal. <laughs> oh my god, there's so many lines in that. That movie really is not that good. <laughs> but it's just one of those weird movies that you have to watch every year. And the more I watch it, the more I'm like, this movie really is terrible. <laughs> um... My favorite part, though, my favorite part is they all rush their asses to get home, and they're hurrying up, hurrying up, hurrying up, trying to get home, because Kevin needs us, Kevin needs us. And then in five seconds, they just walk away from him and leave him alone in the living room. <laughs> oh, yeah, uh, there's, there's a video, um, there's a video, and I don't remember what it was called exactly, but it was uh, Doctor's uh, Look at... Uh, the injuries of Home Alone. And uh, they, they, they literally were giving diagnoses for what they think would have happened if someone in real life had gotten those hits. And, uh, oh yeah, yeah. Brick to the face. That dude is dead. Paint can to the face. Dude is dead. Uh, glass shards to the foot. The one that gets me, though, is the, is the nail in his tar-covered foot. That! Oh, God. Not only is it a filthy nail, that dude's getting tetanus. Oh, yeah, in the sequel, yeah, the giant swinging pipe. Oh, my God. All the teeth just gone. I don't know how I didn't just destroy that flower. Alright, how bad of a job did I do back here? Oh my god, look at all of this. I hate the I hate doing the edging because it's so hard to tell where you have and haven't been. But I can't get the mower back here, so. Alright, I think that's it. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, and, and it's not the rust. You know, I, I, it, I was really late in life learning that it's not the rust. It's the, uh, it's the filth, you know, that, that gives you the tetanus. It's, it's the, the filthiness of the nail, not, not the fact that the nail is rusty. Wait a second. I forgot to see if I'm doing the right height. Uh, six to seven. It is not the right height. There we go. Yeah, six to seven. Okay, let's try this again.
Right, exactly, exactly. But that's why, that's why when Marv, you know, steps on that nail, I'm like, that dude's foot is covered in tar. I was like, that has to be some infection just waiting. Yeah, so that's the one that bugs me more than anything. And then he still has to hobble around on that goddamn tar, tar infected foot. I don't care. I destroyed the flower. I'm tired of dicking around in this property. This is a ridiculous property and way out anyway. I've spent so much time weed eating in this one. Yeah, I'm taking a flower uh, home to my girlfriend. I mean, why? Oh yeah, the electrocution. Straight death. Straight up fucking death. <laughs> Boy, this is a weird angle to be mowing. Oh, 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 there's a collision. That's a paddling. Oh. <laughs> well, if you can't find it, grind it. I gotta say, I'm glad you guys are both hanging out, because it, it was a rough day at work, and this is a good way of ending the evening, so I appreciate you guys hanging out and, and, uh, <laughs> and uh, giving, me, giving me some uh, goofy shit to think about. <laughs> oh, I gotta pause for this one. Yikes. Like, I'm assuming that means that dude stopped existing after that shift. Or were they able to resuscitate him? <laughs> oh wow! Yeah, yeah, I can believe that. I um, I, I, I'm usually very careful around electricity, but there was one time I had a lamp that I didn't realize had an exposed wire in it um and uh, that damn thing shocked me like three times and i couldn't figure out the reason why i thought maybe there was a short in the house so i plugged it into a second one and uh the, oh my god i got shocked three damn times by that thing and i'm just like i'm just glad that um it was it was already going through the appliance as opposed to the straight line but the thing is is um you know in america everything runs at 110 here in Australia, they run everything at 220. Fuck you. I'm not touching anything electrical. I'm calling an electrician. You know, I've been bit by 110. I ain't getting I ain't getting involved with 220. <laughs> in fact, I had a uh, in, in, when I was uh, working uh, in uh, Sydney. I, uh, want, my boss wanted me to do some power washing of the, uh, entrance to the, uh, parking garage, which was a futile effort. There was no way I was getting anything off of that asphalt with that pathetic little, um, uh, power washer that they had. But I was running the electrical line because the plug-in was at the bottom of the incline. The hose was at the top of the incline, and the thing was so rickety and tiny and ridiculous that I just kept knocking it over, and I was like, I'm dragging this line right through the damn, uh, right through the damn, uh, water. And I'm like, I'm, I, I went to the manager in that, of that location and I was like, I don't feel comfortable doing this. And he was like, is it really that bad? And I'm just like, dude, this extension cord is like 20 meters long 
and it's it, it, every five meters is taped up. And he's like, yeah, I guess that's probably not a safe job. Maybe we shouldn't have you do that. And I'm like, all right, looks like I got to finish the job. Let's see, can I fit this through here? Nope. Nope, sure can't. Damn it. I got to get one point, uh, one, no. 0.9% with that goddamn edger. This is gonna suck. How am I for time? This was a 15 minute job. I'm almost there. This this is what sucks about this game. All these little piddly little blades of grass and eventually they will all they will all count towards that final percentage. And I don't know if I'm hitting the goddamn things or not. Unless I'm missing something else. Come on, let me cut that grass and get that last percentage. Ugh. Oh wow, I've gone up one-tenth of a percent. Oh my god. And what sucks is, is I can't leave that on. I have to stand perfectly still and then load the damn thing. Alright, let's go in the backyard and hopefully I can find... What do we need? 0.8%. Uh, Oh, Christ! Remind me to never do the pool job again. I can't even reach that. Yeah, there's like two blades of grass I can't reach. Okay, I guess I got him. Jesus. Okay, there's a decent size amount. These were kind of tough to get up on. Oh! Wait. Oh, no, you, this thing will destroy flowers. I thought once I ran right into it. Next to the pool, did you say? I missed that. Oh, wow, look at all that. Okay. Well, that was a decent amount. I got us one-tenth of a percent. How the hell did I miss that? Oh my god, all the edging. You rich motherfuckers enjoying this? You enjoy watching the show from your fucking third-story windows, you pieces of shit? Fuck you! <laughs> hey, Elon, why don't you get your ass out here and fucking do it yourself? Maybe invent a rocket who can fucking do it. <laughs> Yelling at imaginary rich people. That's, that, that should be a game in and of itself. Almost there. Almost there. One tenth of a percent. I'm just kind of going around the edge. That seems to be where all the trouble's at. Oh, missed that right there. But you see how hard it is to see that when it's not highlighted? Such a pain in the ass. 
It's great doing it. There we go. Fucking finally. Fuck you, Musk. Yeah, I wouldn't look at me either. <laughs> that was fun. <laughs> All right, let's see how bad of a job we did. That one, oh, I don't ever want to do that property again. $6.26 of penalties and fines, $2 for flowers, and $4.26 for collisions. But we made all that up with the ground check time bonus, so we were supposed to get $3.05, uh, we ended up with $3.25, so we got $20 bucks extra. That's not terrible. Hey, look at that! I finally am in the green with my weekly profit. I actually turned a profit. It's been in the red every week since, but this is only like week three, I think. Okay, let's go to the garage and see if we can... Ah, ha, 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 we can buy it! Anytime you want to load there, game. Okay, that's... Oh, pardon me. Um... What are... Not what I thought. Okay, now the one thing I want to be careful about is uh, the equipment when you purchase that. Um, uh, let's see, this has the mulch plate. I wish it would tell me how much the mulch plate costs. Um, Because if I don't have the mulcher, uh, how much is that going to leave me? Because if I don't get the mulcher, then I can't do mulching jobs. And uh, having that thing spewing grass out the side is a real pain in the ass. That'll leave me with $211. I'm going to do one more job just to be safe. I really want that mower, though. Let's see what kind of mowing jobs we have. Let's see, does that require, it just says a general cut. Oh, screw it, let's, let's get it. Let's get the thing, let's take a chance. Okay, and equipment garage, whoops. Oh, it's only 105. Oh, fantastic. Yeah, let's go ahead and get it. How about the Tiger Strike kit? Nah, not quite yet. Can't upgrade your wake waker? Uh, I don't know if uh don't know if I know what you're asking there. Oh, oh, um, no, you can't upgrade it, but you can buy new. Um, but they're pretty expensive. Uh, well, let's see, I got 11, 1100. Um, let's see, where am I trying to go here? Uh, equipment garage, there we go. Okay, let's see. Oh, that one's just a thousand. Let's see, but the difference between that is 36 centimeter cutting width versus 43. Screw it, let's do it. It's a thousand. And we'll still have uh, 300 in the bank. So, yeah. There we go. Now if I have to do uh, uh, weed eating jobs, I'll be able to get a much bigger area. All right. Lovely. Okay, so now that we got the big mower, let's go to the training field. They, they, they say that they need 100, they recommend 150, this one's 132. 
Um, I uh, did it with the uh, the previous one, which was a much lower a lower one. So yeah. All right. Confirm that contract. Let's go. It's a big job, but it's over. It's uh, over a thousand dollars. So yeah. Now this is one of the few places that I will take the edge trimmer and uh, do some of the stuff to get it, you know, kind of prepped. Because there's a lot of obstacles in this one that are real weird to drive around. So yeah, I did this one, and this was the last one. <laughs> it's this is a game that sneaks up on you. I do want to get the Dino Safari DLC. I need to get that at some point. But yeah, it's this game. I when I first saw the trailer for it, I was like, "That's the dumbest game ever." And then they released it on uh, Game Pass, and I'm like, "Well, I can try it without it costing anything." So I I, I took it for a drive, and I was like, "Okay, this is kind of cool." And then I was like, after about two or three jobs, I was like. Okay, I, I think I'm going to play this game now. <laughs> All right, let's go find some stuff. We got six objet darts. Oh, this is not the property I was thinking of. This is a different property. All right, there's a one. Yeah, there's a two. There's a three. Nope, I thought that was something. Is that a beer bottle? Oh, you riding, you riding students are uh, acting naughty out here. Who's getting drunk, the riders or the horses? <laughs> Oh, our signs, you are so wonderful. <laughs> Frau Blucher. <laughs> you know, we had a uh, we had a uh, gal who worked at the uh, radio station for a short time and her pun game was fucking ridiculous. She had hundreds of those damn things all queued up and she would drop them so fast you never saw them coming and I'm just like where the hell did that even come from she was she was a great anchor to have during my show because I was kind of the goofy bastard uh, and she was she was the one that kind of kept me kind of in line just a little bit because uh, yeah hundreds <laughs> yeah that's the type of shit she would drop where the hell is that I can't find Sometimes if you step far enough away, when the grass doesn't load, you can kind of see it. But I'm not, I'm not seeing it. She was a sweet gal, but the problem was, was she got real homesick. She didn't live, she was off to college, and she got, when she graduated college, I thought she was going to stick around and work at the station, and uh, she got real homesick and had to go home, and I was like, oh. But uh, she, she was a real nice, oh, wait, I think I saw it. There it is. <laughs> you know what's and and you know they're all groaners. The only thing that the only thing that I didn't really like about her was she was so super squeaky clean, and um, I, I don't. Oh wait a second, we need to edge trim some of this. And and it's not that I don't mind you know squeaky clean individuals, but sometimes I just have trouble trusting them. You know, I have trouble trusting people who don't cuss once in a while. I don't like people who are, Jesus Christ, that thing's fucking harrowing. Good God, this thing's going to take a finger off. Um, but anyway, I, I don't like people who are just, you know, cuss, 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 cuss all the damn time. But people who don't ever curse, I just... I don't know. I have trouble trusting. Jesus Christ. I mean, it's gas. Or, I mean, it's battery, so I guess... Jesus Christ. This thing sounds horrible. Get him, Leatherface! Do your thing, cuz! 
Wow, this is some tall grass. It's bogging down the edge here. Oh, there's so goddamn many of these. This is not the yard that I thought I was signing up for. It has been a while since I've uh, played this. Maybe they've added a bunch of uh, new properties to make things a little different. Yeah, see, a lot of these things, it's, it's not so much um, being accurate. But as you can see, edging when it's a wide open field feels a lot easier because it's so much, it, because you have the other grass to kind of compare it to. But here it's, it's more just kind of giving yourself a little bit of room to work with so you don't have to drive right up against the damn things. You're not trying to get it perfect, you're just trying to give yourself a little bit of room to work. Yeah. Well, this is the uh, the horse riding stables and everything, so they got these wide open fields. Frau Blucher. Every time the horse whinnies, I just say Frau Blucher. I started doing that last night, and it just, it's carried over to today. That's from Young Frankenstein. This is a stupid little joke. <laughs> what the hell is that beacon? What the hell is in the air? Is that the grass? I feel like I'm in Skyrim here all of a sudden. All these birds flying overhead. The beacon <laughs> blasting into the damn sky. Okay, uh, is that all of them? Nope, I missed this one. Jesus. You know, I've never played that. I don't, I don't, I'm not even sure what that game is. Is that the one where you play as the, uh, the tribal gal who, um, has to take on the uh, robotic dinosaur monsters. No, 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 that's... Oh, I can't think of the name of that one. No, that's not our fault, no. That's like... Shit, I can't even think of its name. Okay, did I get everything? Did I get this one? Yes, I did. Okay, let's get the big mower out and see how well that... Uh, see how well this goes. Oh, it's one of those, kind of like, um, uh, oh, damn it, what was that one? Um, no Man's Sky, where it's like, it's a flight simulator, it's a, uh, crafting game, it's, it's, uh, taming your animals. I actually, uh, actually, once they got all their shit straight on that one, <gasps> I didn't put the, oh, no, I didn't put the, uh, I didn't put the, um, the plate on, so it's going to be throwing grass. I hope that's okay. Shit. I can't believe I forgot to do that. Um, okay, what do we need? Five to six centimeters. All right, there we go. Yeah, we're going to have to go in counter... We're going to have to go clockwise. Ooh, listen to it. Purr. Yeah, see, this, this is a side thrower. 
some jobs you have to have a mulcher because you have to pick up the grass if you if you don't. But apparently since this is a pasture, that's not a big deal. So I think we'll be okay. But because I'm not mulching, I might not have the uh, uh, engine bog downs like I usually do. Okay, the only problem is because the, uh, the side uh, the side uh, thrower is, you know, throw into the right side. I can't go that up against the wall. Because I can't get right up against it. So once I make a pass with, uh, with this, then I'll flip it around and go the other way. I don't know why. I have to go in counterclockwise circles. This does not feel right at all. Well, see, early in the game, I, I bought that blue, the, the mower that I was using before I bought this one, and I forgot to buy the, uh, the mulching plate so that it could be a mulcher. And I did a job that that did not want it to be mulched, they, or they wanted it to be mulched, and I didn't have enough money to buy it, so I had to take out a loan just to get the damn thing, because I was throwing grass everywhere. Okay, so what's the time? I need to... 37.30. Uh, so what is the half of that? Oh, I don't know. I always like to see, on these big jobs, I always like to see, you know, how much, how much I need to be at the 50% mark. Ah, I don't like this one. It's got more horsepower. It's got a wider deck. Did I get a penalty? I missed what the penalty was for. But with this, with this tall grass, 1845. Okay, fantastic. Thank you. So when I hit 1845, oh, I've left grass clippings. Oh, you know what? I'm just quitting this. I hate doing that. I hate quitting on a job like that, but it, I'm getting a penalty for leaving the grass clippings, and I just can't handle that. Because then I have to go back and pick it all up, or I'm going to get a monetary fine. So, I know. I know. All that edging for absolutely nothing. All right. See, I forgot to put the mulch plate on. That's the fucking difference. Fucking bonehead. All right. Let's go back. Yeah, same job. Hey, Brett, good to see you again. When you showed up and disappeared uh, the, at the beginning, I was afraid that uh, uh, the uh, the kettle exploded. <laughs> hey, that's the, that's okay. I'm still glad to see you hanging out. Just got me a new mower, and I forgot to put the mulching plate on, so I completely screwed the job and had to bail. Yeah, rage quit. <laughs> Totally was. Totally was a rage quit. But picking up all that grass is just something I do not have the patience for. Because every time you pass through, you're leaving basically a trail of grass. And I'm like, no. <sighs> so I was like, it's just better to quit, go back, and start it all over again. It won't take long. In fact, I'm just going to jump into it and just start mowing. I won't worry about the edging this time. Oh, okay. I, I've never I've never messed with it, but oh, forgot to pick up the uh, objects, the object darts. Yeah, I um I I've just I've always had the appropriate equipment, so I was always like, eh, we'll just start it all over. I I hadn't gotten that far, and this is a new mower, so it's taking care of the job real fast. I just, I don't want my time bonus to be eaten up by something that um, it was just a simple mistake, which was, I already had the, the plate, I just hadn't attached it, so it's a stupid little mistake, but yeah, no big deal. I don't know if quitting the job uh, took out any uh, reputation points or, or reputation, yeah, reputation points. Oh shit, it's all over here. 
There we go. That was a much faster uh, pickup time anyway. Oh, oh shit. What's the mowing? Five to six. There we go. Turn the blades on and off we go. <laughs> I like to be professional. <laughs> I like these properties that leave a little bit of a buffer zone next to the fence so I don't have to grind it. Alrighty, well Danger Ranger, thank you so much for hanging out. It was a lot of fun. Uh, appreciate you sticking around for it all. Get yourself some sleep and we'll uh, catch you next time. Oh my god, I, <laughs> yeah, Descenders, I've actually been playing that in my off time because I, I'm, finding it, I'm finding it so fun. I've actually gotten it unlocked all the way through uh, all four sections and I've got all the shortcuts to them. That last stage is so much fucking bullshit. You're basically on a snow-covered mountain. When you start off, you're on a helicopter and you have to jump off of the helicopter to start the map, uh, start the uh, the track. And I don't think I've gotten more. I don't think I've gotten further than three uh, courses into that whole path. I don't have any idea what the major boss jump for the mountains is. I don't think I'm ever going to see it. There is so much uh, bullshit that gets thrown into those things to make them as difficult as possible. I mean, I get it. It's the final stage. But it's like, I save up all of my health through the first three, and then immediately lose it on the first two levels, uh, the first two tracks. But I went online and I found a whole bunch of uh, codes for uh, free, uh, free clothes and stuff. So I've got some pretty cool swag. Still nothing better than my chicken helmet, though. That chicken helmet's gonna take a long time to find something else. <laughs> Straighten up there. Back up, and off we go. It's still fun kind of starting off, you know, and doing like a full run. And there is, an, there is a challenge to get through all four sections. But, um, you know, I can make it all the way to the, uh, to the fourth uh, section, but I can't, I can't get very far into it. I just need to practice, but there's a lot of bullshit jumps. <laughs> I thought the forest was full of bullshit, but no... The canyon, even more bullshit. The mountains, it's just a mountain of bullshit. Oh, hang on a second, I just realized I had something, one of my, uh, one of my windows was not open. getting bogged down, but it's it's kind of nice having this uh, speed, being able to take care of the job without it bogging down. Uh, I don't think so. I don't think I heard about that. Are you doing uh, the little figurines?
Yeah, I, Warhammer is one of those things I know of, but I know nothing about. It shows up a lot on my Reddit thread uh, when I go to the popular section for some reason. Okay. I might just do that. I'm not I'm not on Instagram, but I might check it out. I don't that's another site that I'm like, I don't know anything about. <laughs> I don't know if it's something that I should get on and or even if I did, what would I post to it? I don't know. The problem I have is is getting people to know that I'm on there. I mean, I can post a lot of stuff, and I do on Twitter, but uh, I just don't. I don't get any. I don't have any followers or anything like that. See, and that's what I have Twitter for, because um, it's it's more text and photo based. I guess I don't know. I don't. I don't, honestly, I don't really care for Twitter's format. I don't like it at all. It's just everybody's fucking there. Sometimes I get a little bit of uh, communication. Like, uh, I've spoken to a couple of the YouTubers that I actually watch uh, and try to get some, you know, pointers and maybe some advice. You know, just shooting the bullshit. But, um, you know, just trying to make those connections with the people who are already in the system. I don't know if it's, I don't know if it'll ever go anywhere, but I've at least made a couple of inroads. Just nothing major. is on Instagram, and uh, she, but she has like uh, 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 jewelry designs and things that she's actually selling. I keep trying her, trying to get her to go into some video production, you know, uh, of watching, of having people watch her while she does her work. Uh, not so much her, but like uh, a, a video uh, camera pointing down on the desk while she's doing her designs, working with clay, working with metal, and uh, all that stuff. Um, she's kind of interested, but I'm like, yeah, just, just, just tell me what you want, and I'll, I'll build it for you. And we've never gotten that far. <laughs> uh, we were, uh, we were at some shops uh, a couple weekends ago. And uh, when I was walking around, I noticed that all the products had name tags on them. And uh, I uh, asked the uh, sales gal, I said, are these all like local artists? And she said, absolutely. And I said, is that what you do is just rent out to local people? And she said, we sure do. And uh, my wife was interested in that, but she's, <laughs> she's, uh, she's not exactly the people person that I am. I'll walk up to somebody and just ask them a fucking question. <laughs> We got done with that uh, meeting, and I took their I took the gal's business card and everything. And we got back home, and she was like, "Thank you for doing that." I'm like, well, "That's what I'm here for." <laughs> what is that over there? That is a fancy, fancy house. I don't know if I've ever done that property. Like I said, it's been a while since I played this. I'm wondering if they updated it and added some new content. Oh, now I've messed up my camera angles. Rob Luker.
Boy, I'm glad I got this thing with extra horsepower, because if it's cutting out the way it is, that last mower I had would not have been able to handle this at all. It would have been bogging down a hell of a lot more. mower is going to put me to sleep. <laughs> These long, low drones just, just, whoops, it's just uh, white noise enough for me to be ready for a nap. <laughs> take the edger to this one unless I get enough uh, for the rest, but I think this is like a 99.9, .9, so... Okay, this was still a hefty job, and it's worth a lot of money. <laughs> You've been waiting all damn night to throw that one out, didn't you? Yeah, that's what she said. <laughs> I have tried so hard to uh, to work in uh, from Archer phrasing. I uh, I haven't been able to get phrasing to go as. Um, Seamlessly as that's what she said. There was another one that I was trying to do uh, a while back, and I can't remember what it was. It was it was along the same lines as that's what she said. Oh, it was from uh, Brooklyn Nine Nine. That's the name of your porn title. That's the name of your porn movie. Yeah, I know. That's that. Yeah, boom, phrasing. But yeah, it was Brooklyn Nine Nine, and uh, they were doing. Uh, that's the name of your porn title. Uh, that's the name of your porn movie. And that one was kind of working pretty well, but it's a lot less. That's what she said. Has a lot of. Um, it has a lot of room to work with, but uh, also the name of your porn title, you know, throwing that one out. And I would do that for a few times. My, my wife would say something, and I was just like, name of your porn title? And she'd be like, shut the hell up. <laughs> 
<laughs> and I'm just like, I'm trying to make it work. But uh, yeah, phrasing phrasing uh, works a couple of times, but uh, sometimes phrasing um, doesn't. Even if it if, even if it comes up, phrasing sometimes doesn't work as well as that's what she says. But yeah, the, that's the name of your porno. Whoops. That's okay. Porno is an okay word. I don't think porno is a dirty word. See that? Um, that's why I need more followers because the um, uh, auto mod uh, doesn't um, hasn't had enough work. I try to uh, I try to keep the f bombs down, but um, for the most part, if it's not. But yeah, porno to me is not a dirty word, so the auto mod should not be uh, stopping it either. Right, it's it's a it's an actual thing. <laughs> Speaking of dirty words and everything, I still I will never forget the day that I got in trouble because I work when I was working at the uh, uh, radio station. I got in trouble for saying the word hell. Like we were a super conservative country station, and uh, I I got in trouble for saying hell. But Toby Keith can put a boot up your ass. But I can't say hell, unless I'm talking about the physical location. Oh, yeah, panties. <laughs> That's right. Oh, my God, that was so funny. It gave me the answer, and then it censored it for the final, for the final answer. That just never made any sense. But that's the type of stuff I'm like, I'm glad it happened while I was live. Because, yeah, then I had witnesses who were able to see that and enjoy in the ridiculousness alongside. And then it just kind of became a running theme. Every answer has to be panties now. Along with the Joe Namath netted slingshot. Oh, speaking of, speaking of, oh, that episode's not out. I can't, t ah, I can't do that joke. I have a granny panties joke in an upcoming episode of uh, Sugar Pants Video Basement. But I can't say it because that episode's not out yet. And I can't remember, I can't remember if it's the, if it's the upcoming season or if it's the fourth season. But yeah, just keep in mind, there is a granny panties joke, and it's a good one. <laughs> it's, um, I, I, I'll say this much, it's the movie, it is, it is, um, it is a movie, and I'm not afraid to say, it's the worst one of the year. It is hands down, like, it's not even close. And I'm not nice about it. I Sometimes I feel like maybe I was too mean about it. But I don't think I was really mean. I was just being honest. And I won't, I won't say what the title is, but yeah. But yeah, if you like granny panty jokes, I've got some granny panty jokes coming up. But they're appropriate. I know, exactly. And I'm like, well, I don't know what to tell you guys. You made a bad fucking movie, and I think people should be told about it. Like, inexcusably bad. And if you watch some of my episodes, that ought to give you an idea of how fucking bad it was. Because I'm usually, I usually give the movies the benefit of the doubt. Like, I give a wide berth. To some of these movies 
as long as there's some kind of as long as there's some kind of you know entertainment value i will give it props when it when it does but this this movie you know neil breen no neil breen is not in it nobody's in this movie like i had to look it up nobody is in this movie <laughs> Oh, yeah, yeah. No, I, I know what you mean. Yeah, his movies are bad. But I don't I don't know if I've ever officially seen them. I just I just seen the memes online and yeah, they're they're pretty they're pretty ridiculous. But I feel like I feel like I couldn't do one of his movies for my show because it's a little too meme worthy. I still haven't seen um the, uh, what was it? The Room? Just the, uh, I did not hit her. I did not hit her. I did not. Oh, hi, Mark. Whatever, the, 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 the Room. Yeah, I, I wanted to see it, but I, I get to actually, actually see the whole thing. You're tearing me apart, Lisa! But I know all the lines. <laughs> It's weird when you know a movie really well, even though you've never seen it. <laughs> there is, speaking of shirts, I don't know why this made me think of this. There's a shirt that I really want to get. I saw it on a website, and unfortunately, the website didn't have, like, international shipping, so I couldn't get it. It was an American company. It is... Um, it's, a, it's Captain Picard, and he's jamming on a guitar, and he's looking down, and the phrase is, what was it? It's, um, oh, oh, what was that? There was that episode of Star Trek The Next Generation where he was talking with the uh, other species that only speaks in, like, uh, phrases and euphemisms. It was like, um, Dar Dar Dargeel and Tanagra when the walls fell. And it was like, it was like, a, it's like a concert shirt. And it's like, uh, or whatever that was. But anyway, it's, it's such a nerdy fucking shirt. And I'm like, I, I really want that. It's, um, what was it? Oh, wait a second. Wait a second. No, no, no. I think, I think I have it on my phone. Let me see if, let me take a look real quick. Give me just one second here. If, I don't know if it'll show up, uh, if I find it, if, if it'll show up on my, um, uh, camera, but let me let me see. I can't remember if I saved that one. Yeah, Strange New Worlds. I think that was the episode. Um, Darmok and Jalad at Tanagra, September nineteen ninety. Um, I don't I don't know if this is going to come up. Well, let me let me switch over to the webcam uh, focus here, just so it's a little bit bigger. Let me see if I can. There we go. Darmok and Jalad at Tanagra, September 1990. I want this shirt so fucking bad. <laughs> oh my god. When I saw that, I was like, that is fucking hilarious. Like, I went Valley Girl with that one. That's hilarious. <laughs> All right, back to the yard. But when I saw that, I was like, you fucking nerds, you really did it, didn't you? <laughs> Too damn funny. Like, OMG, like, oh my god, jack me with a spoon that's like so toast, toast my sty. <laughs> right, right, exactly. <laughs> you son of a bitch, I'm in. <laughs> Rick Sanchez, you son of a bitch, I'm in.
Yeah, I don't think we're going to get a time bonus on this one. But at least it won't. It won't. It didn't take as long as uh, the last one. The last time I did one of these horse fields, God, I think I was doing it for almost 40 minutes. Maybe longer. I'll have to go back and see. It, it took a long time to get that because my mower was not uh, not the right size. It was not the right job. But I couldn't pass up my first opportunity at a thousand bucks for a single job. Yeah, it was it was ridiculous. That that blue mower. Um, was doing a job very similar to this one and it just took so damn long because it kept bogging down it didn't have the horsepower to deal with the tall grass and uh yeah it was just it was really it was really bad but i i, I had to keep going with the long point <laughs> Yeah, you can find that one. It's down there right next to Forest Humps and Lorenzo's Oil Massage. <laughs> Maybe one day I'll get famous and people can start taking my clips out of context and turn them into cartoons like they do with Game Grumps. I would be so happy if that ever happened. Someone turned me into a cartoon. <laughs> I'm hoping that... <laughs> well, it's been a while since this one's been mowed. So uh, it's going to get a little hairy there at times. But if you power through it, I guarantee you, you'll see it on the other side. <laughs> I don't know why I did that like Wolfman Jack. Hey, everybody, we're going to be doing all the hits and, uh, hits and misses all oh, for tonight. So you just hang on out there, free dental floss. I don't know. <laughs> Oh, uh, getting loopy now. <laughs> oh, speaking of dirty jokes, have you seen the have you seen the uh, 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 my episode where I review? Um, oh, dang it! Um, God Monster of Indian Flats. Had had you seen that one yet? Yeah. <laughs> Were you as shocked when that girl said, I've been following you since the glory hole? <laughs> that one came out like, well, do what now? <laughs> like, I don't even know what she's referencing. Was that the name of the bar? I don't, I don't know. It's just, it came from out of nowhere. That's what she said. Boom, phrasing. <laughs> But that's just the thing, you know, she was chasing the, uh, chasing the sheep monster. The sheep monster hadn't made it to town yet. I've been following you since the glory hole. Well, even if that was the bar's name, that's not true at all. It's, yeah. I don't know. That movie was so fucking bad. And yet, not the worst one that I did for the year. <laughs> There is one much worse, and that's the one that, I, that has the granny panty joke. <laughs> I was actually uh, kind of upset um, at that episode of... Um, Larry the Cable Guy. Oh, yeah. <laughs> they get some of them with uh, biscuits and gravy. I could eat me a mess of panties. <laughs> uh, 
Um, but yeah, in uh, God Monster of Indian Flats, um, what was I going to say? I, there was a joke that I had to edit out because um, I got uh, hit with a copyright strike because of it, because I was using uh, a TV theme song um, at the very end, after the credits, uh, I play the clip where the monster comes up on the kids who are having a picnic, and I just play the Sesame Street song uh, theme song. And I got hit with the copyright strike. I'm like, come on, it's like the 1970s Sesame Street. Are you really going to claim ownership of that and not let me borrow it? I was like, ah. I know, exactly. So... So imagine the kids are all sitting there uh, eating their picnic, and the god monster comes up over the hill, and den 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 sunny day sweeping the and then the kids start screaming and everything. Yeah, I wanted that joke, and nope, it's like copyright, copyright, copyright. You can't use this. I'm like, fine. So I cut it out and just put the clip as is. You're right. Well, I did make that joke where it was like uh, we finally get a chance to see the, uh, the, uh, the sheet monster, and it looks like a cross between, it's like what would happen if Mr. Snuffleupagus went through uh, Seth Brundle's uh, pods with a flea. <laughs> so I was already making Sesame Street jokes. I don't know. It's, it's okay. I just, I gotta be careful sometimes because I'll get those ideas and it's like, I'm not working radio where I have a blanket, um, you know, right to whatever audio that I have. So I gotta be careful with that. I, I'm still uh, treating it like I did when I was working in radio and, and I gotta be, just gotta watch out for that. Sometimes I'll have a joke. I'm like, yeah, that'd be funny. Can't do it without the copyright claim though. And then I just, I just move on from it. You know, we might actually get a time bonus on this one. We're already up to 93, and the time limit was uh, 37 and 37:30. I might have to do some edging underneath some of these uh, some of these jumps, but I might be able to get that pretty quickly. We'll just I, I doubt I'll have to get all of it. But yeah, I'm, I'm currently working on uh, scripting, and I've almost finished the scripting process for my year two episodes. And boy, I tell you, there are some stinkers that I got in the second year. But there's some good stuff, too. The second year is a lot more cohesive, so I'm, I'm anxious for that to hurry up and get here. I've also got a better, uh, more consistent uh, release schedule. Uh, in the second year, I'll be doing every other week instead of six weeks on, seven weeks off. So hopefully that'll make it feel not so hit and miss. we may not have to do any edging at all. I just got to get 2%. Is there any major graphs? Nope, it's just... It's just the edging. So, just 0.2%. We can do that. Hopefully we can do that in less than seven minutes.
Oh, I have had some major issues with ants here lately. Um, I think it's because it's been raining and they want to get in, uh, get inside, and they found they found their way to the kitchen. Come on, we can still get a time bonus. have to get that. There we go. Done. What did we beat? Almost six minutes to go. All right. Let's get the puck on out of here. That might have been my last job for the evening. Let's just see how well we did. Okay, it was worth 1220 and we got uh, $45.63 more. We had $7.25 worth of collisions, but our cutting time bonus covered that, so everything else, all right. Very nice. Uh, we got a decent amount of XP, um, or rather RP, uh, reputation points. So, yeah. All right. Now... What is the cheapest mower that I can get? The cheapest is $2,149. So I'm going to need about 450. Wait, 550. So $550 job. Do we have that available? $555. There it is right there. <laughs> okay, we'll do one more job, and then uh, we should be able to buy a second mower. And with that, the possibility of hiring our first employee. You have a mower deck that's bigger than what it's asking for. Yeah, that means I'll be done faster. <laughs> Oh, fantastic. Okay. Well, this will be this will be the last one then. But this should get us to where we can hire an employee. And then I'll have to deal with that headache. <laughs> but I'll just I'll I'll check it out and see what uh, uh, applications I have waiting. What's funny is is I'll have applications sitting there waiting for me to get to them. And um but but the thing is is they're all going to be very low skilled because they're um, I'm, I'm, I still don't have the reputation worthy of hiring people who are already perfectly skilled, and no matter what happens, uh, no matter how high you have an employee trained, um, I don't know if they'll ever get a hundred percent of what the job is worth. Like if the job is worth five hundred dollars, they're always like four thirty. There's always, because they, you know, they have the penalties and everything, it's like, you know, I, I can be the perfectionist, they can't. I don't know if I've ever done this property before. Yeah, you fucking rich bastards. Yeah, I'll mow your yard. No, I take that, no? No, no, I take that back, This I have done this one. Yeah, I've done it with a much smaller mower, though. One more obstacle. Where are you at? Must be tiny. Damn it. <laughs> Ernie. Okay, Bert. <laughs> oh, I was always a big fan. There it is, right there. Always a big fan of Bert and Ernie. Um, uh, in my in my young adult years, uh, my family would take uh, kayak trips. Um, and we would just get in the kayaks and we'd just be on the river all day long. And one of the highlights that my mom would love is when we would start singing Sesame Street songs. 
we'd be uh, we'd be down in the areas where there were you know uh, rock walls on either side so we would just yell and the echo would carry right down the river forever so not only were we doing Sesame Street songs but we were also doing like sloth from the Goonies just hey you guys <laughs> and just so um, <laughs> so, so yeah, so we'd just be paddling down there and just rubber ducky, you're the one. <laughs> and uh, my mom adored it; she loved it. Just watching her, watching her kids act like a bunch of fucking idiots. She loved it. What's the cutting height for this one? Seven to eight. There we go. Engage the blades. Yeah, I think the last time I did this one, I didn't have a zero turn radius mode. So I might be able to actually get these uh, harsh corners. My mom's actually, actually my mom's absolute favorite uh, Sesame Street song was the Boogie Woogie Sheep. Uh, the one where uh, Ernie is uh, trying to fall asleep and, well then I get to pop my pillow and I put on the light, got some, <laughs> got some uh, partners I can count on called the Boogie Woogie Sheep. I dance myself to sleep. And basically, it's 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 the song that Ernie does, and and Bert's trying to sleep, and and Bert just wants to get to sleep. Yeah, uh, check it out. It's 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 a classic uh, Sesame Street song. Just the boogie woogie sheep. Uh, Ernie starts tap dancing around the uh, the bedroom, and well, it's getting kind of drowsy, so the moment has come for <laughs> and then. Uh, he starts going to sleep, and the uh, the sheep start carrying Bert's bed out the door and lock him outside while Ernie goes to sleep in a nice, quiet bedroom. <laughs> I tell you, though, uh, Frank Oz and Jim Henson were friggin' comedy geniuses. Oh, my God, they were such... Bert and Ernie was like vaudeville. And, you know, as a kid, you don't really notice that. But some of their jokes and their routines were just hilarious. Um, and, uh, you know, some of them were really smartly written. And like, you know, in the sense of comedy. You know, their timing and back and forth. You know, it's, it's, it's not so much uh, Abbott and Costello, but kind of in that same idea that, you know, you have the, the joke... You have the Joker, and then you have the uh, the straight man uh, in the team. So in that sense, very classic comedy. One of my uh, one of my favorites was when. Uh, Ernie was practicing his drums, and Bert wanted to read. So Ernie was like, oh, come on, Bert, we can play a little game. And Bert's like, oh, yeah, what kind of game? And he's like, well, what I'm going to do is I'm going to play on the drums, and then you try to say what I played on the drums. So if I was to go, then you'd say, ba dum bum ching And uh, so they played a few rounds of that, and... Um, so, uh, by the time they get to the last one, Ernie's like, uh, okay, Bert, try this one. And then he just plays this really long, long drum solo. And when he gets done, he's like, okay, Bert, try that one. And Bert's like, um, but dum bum bum but dum bum bum but dum bum ching but dum bum ching da 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 Ching ching. And Ernie's like, wow. <laughs> wow, you you Bert, you you did that whole thing. And then uh, Bert has finally gotten into it. He's like, you wanna play some more? Ha ha ha! I like this. And he's like, um, 
I don't know, Bert. Uh, I have to go uh, feed my guppies. <laughs> and then Bert looks at the camera. He's like, well, I can't lose them all. <laughs> and he goes back to his book. <laughs> and I'm like, it's like the one time Bert gets it gets one over on Ernie, and he can't he can't handle it. <laughs> and why can I remember that whole fucking drum routine, that whole thing that I just did, where Bert repeated it? That's word for word exactly how it works. Why I can remember that, but what I had for breakfast yesterday, I don't fucking. Know. That Bert and Ernie skit is in my DNA. A lot of grass on this side. I'm gonna have to get the edger for some of this if I don't have enough to finish the job. Is this a 99, 99.5? So we got a little wiggle. In. <laughs> Is that from laughing or? Oh, you're sick. That's right. That's right. Oh, that sucks. And me, man, me making you laugh probably not helping. But I can't help the diamond entertainer. Well, hopefully you get over it sometime soon. Are you on the mend, or are you right in the thick of it? Oh man, well I'm, I'm kind of sorry for that. I don't, uh, I don't mean to cause discomfort. I appreciate the laughs, but I don't want you to kill yourself. <laughs> that's okay. Well, at least stuff is moving. That's a, that's at least a step in the right direction. <laughs> I remember when I was uh, living in the States, the closest thing I had to health care was my, um, when I'd go into work and I was feeling sick, my, my version of health care was a uh, triple-decker uh, burrito from uh, Taco Bell and all the hot sauce those fuckers would let me have. I would literally eat the burrito and the burrito would warm up whatever was in my throat and then I would just take those hot, so hot sauce packets and just down them like shots and the acid and everything would break everything up. I'd just hurl out some giant, you know, golf ball sized uh, wad of lung butter, go to work and be like, let's just get through this shit. I did that way too many times. You know, you know don't go to the doctor and get some fucking medicine. That's expensive. <laughs> Just go to Taco Bell and hope that they have enough hot sauce to take care of this shit. <laughs> oh, yeah, okay, so you got the double whammy going on. Yeah, that sucks. Ugh. I will say this much, though. Um, after all the COVID lockdowns and all the times going out with the, uh, uh, with the uh, masks, let me tell you, every cold and flu season, I'm wearing a mask. For me, this has been one of the healthiest couple of years that I've ever had in my life. And I'm like, yeah, it's probably has something to do with, you know, what the Japanese have been doing for centuries. Wear a fucking mask when you're sick. Or when it's and when everyone else around you is sick. What a novel fucking idea. Right, exactly. I carry one in my pocket uh, no matter what. Most of it, it's been pretty healthy around my area. Uh, a lot of the a lot of the numbers are down and everything, but every once in a while we'll get a new story uh, from another uh, territory where it's starting to come back, and I'm like, Ugh, we're gonna get we're gonna get more lockdowns and shit. But uh, yeah, no, I'm 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 fully sold on the uh, uh, with the masks. Yeah, I don't blame you. When I'm sick, I, the last thing I want to do is go into work and have to deal with other people. Um, I don't know. If, I don't know if you've mentioned um, what what is it you do for a job. Um, if you don't mind saying, if you, if you don't want to say it online, that's okay. Just curious. Oh, okay. 
You, oh god, no. You work in retail? No, you take a sick day, bud. Ain't no way. Yeah, absolutely not. And if I was your manager, I would be like, stay home, get well, when you're better, come back. And then when someone else gets sick, then you step up and fill in for their shifts. I think that's how it should work. Which is probably why I've never been a manager. Right, exactly. At some point, you just have to put the sign up and be like, no, I'm done. I'm done. No one else. You can't line up after this. Right, yeah. Well, that's the thing I hate about some managers in the States. You know, when you're sick, it's like, no, it's, it's, like, it's like for me, if, if you're anything like me, it's like, I'm feeling sick today. Give me one day and I'll be back tomorrow feeling better. Maybe not 100%, but just let me rest, get some chicken soup, some Sprite, and some crackers. You know, redneck, uh, uh, cold and flu medication. Get, I'll get a gallon of orange juice and I'll drink the whole fucking thing all day long. Just let me have that. I'll watch the prices right and I'll be feeling better. Just give me that one day and I'll be fine. No, you got to come in and work. Fine. I go in, I work, make myself worse. Now I got to take off five days. Smart plan, dickhead. <laughs> it is. <coughs> Chicken noodle soup, Sprite, a packet of cra uh, saltine crackers, and, um, uh, uh, and, and, and orange juice. And if I'm feeling fancy, a big tub of uh, store-bought uh, Jello. Like the biggest tub you can get. If it has fruit, great. If not... Perfectly fine. Cherry or rainbow seems to be your only options at the grocery store. And I don't know why. And literally make it the cheapest chicken noodle soup that you can find. If it's best choice or always save, you're on your way to being healthy again. I don't know what it is. I think it's the salt or something. I don't know. But that's what I had when I was a kid, and when I feel sick, that's what I want. God, man, it, it, man, it, you got my sympathies because that's the thing. When I'm si when I'm feeling sick, you know, I gotta, I, I just, it's all fluids. I'm like, I'm gonna piss out whatever's infected in me. I'm gonna, you know, get my system, put it into my, uh, put it into either my bowels or my uh, or my bladder, and then I'll deposit it in the fucking bathroom, and we'll get better tomorrow. That's all I want. I just want to sleep and piss. <laughs> so yeah, not being able to have fluids. Oh man, that that I'm sure is not helping. Yeah, well, I don't know. I think some of that. I think some of it is uh, some of it. Uh, you know, it's it's kind of genetics, but I don't know. I don't know your full situation though. But you got my sympathies, man. But knowing all this, I appreciate you hanging out with me. Hopefully, it's making you feel a little bit better. I don't know. If, I don't know if it is, but <laughs> oh yeah. Oh, I see what you mean. Yeah. Oh well, good, good, good. I'm not a licensed uh, physician, and I've never been to any kind of medical school. But I've, I'm a firm believer in laughter being a very good medicine. Some say it's the best medicine. 
But uh, yeah, I I know that sounds cornball, but uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Name of my porno. I've never been to medical school. <laughs> Dear Hustler, I never thought it would happen to me. I decided to go to medical school, and you would not believe the hot bitches that go to this friggin' college. <laughs> I never thought of myself as much of a player, but let me tell you, that semester, I was swimming in poon. <laughs> I went to school to study paleo... Uh, uh, <laughs> oh shit, I about screwed it up. I went to school to study, uh, uh, to study the heart. Who would have known that in my side time, I would have turned out to be an amateur gynecologist? <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> oh, that's good stuff. I don't know why anytime I do anything like porno involved, I always do the like douchebag New York accent. I don't know why. It's this. <laughs> Name of your porn title. <laughs> oh god, what? Oh, this is this is gonna get me down a bad road, I'm sure. <laughs> oh, boo! <laughs> oh, that's gross. <laughs> that's a good one. I don't think I've ever heard that one. What's the difference? Be <laughs> What's the difference between a pregnant chick and a light bulb? You can unscrew the light bulb, but you can't unscrew the president's <laughs> That's not right. That's not right. You can't, that's no. That's no. I gotta be careful telling these jokes, because I've got so many of them that I've told over the years that are not acceptable. <laughs> I don't need to get kicked off of Twitch now that I'm starting to get a somewhat of a fan base. <laughs> oh shit. See now I'm trying to think. It's been a long time since I've sat around doing a joke session. It's been it's been so long since I've done that. Um, so now I'm sitting here trying to think of any of them that I used to tell. <laughs> okay, I got one. I got one. It's a it's a story joke. Uh, a little boy uh, is uh, getting all dressed up for Halloween, and uh, he, he this year he was so excited because he wanted to go as a pirate. So he um, he heads out, and uh, he's all by himself. Uh, a lot of his, he said he was going to meet up with some friends later on, but he wanted to hit a few houses along the way. So he stops up at this house. And this uh, sweet old lady answers the door, and he's all, trick or treat. And the lady looks at him and is like, oh, my goodness. Oh, we have a little pirate. Oh, but where are your buccaneers? And the boy looks at her and says, under my bucking hat, bitch. <laughs> oh. That's a good one. Anytime a kid's cussing. I like this mower because I don't have to raise and lower the mowing deck. I just turn the mower uh, the mower head off and I'm done. Throttle it down and we're done. All right, 16:31 and okay, we did uh, almost three minutes earlier. Not too bad. <clears throat> I like the uh, I like that when you get a heavier mower, it actually leaves the tire tracks 
in the grass. Oh, it is still not allowing redneck. That's so funny. <laughs> there you go. If you've ever been accused of lying through your tooth, you might be a redneck. I have to do the voice. I have to do that high-pitched register that he does. If you've ever misspelled anything in Christmas lights, you might be a redneck. <laughs> oh, shoot. There's so many of those. Uh, I, 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 used to, I used to like uh, Jeff Foxworthy and Bill Ingvall in the 90s. Okay. Oh, we're up to established rank one. Ooh. Fancy. Oh, and we repaid uh, 350 of our loan. Uh, let's see. How is our loan doing? Good God, that's 40... 40 40% uh, 40 interest. Insufficient funds. I still have 2,800 left. Right? Oh, I gotta get that damn thing repaid. The interest is killing me. Okay, alright. Uh, let's go and to our one bay available. Oh, we don't have enough. Oh, I thought we were gonna have enough for that job. I was going to get this uh, rinky-dink little mower here and uh, 2,000, but I still need uh, 8, 9, 10, 11, so I still need uh, 340 some dollars. Well, dang it, I really thought that we were going to have enough money uh, to at least get the uh, second. What do we got? 600, 400, 300. Well, there's a couple of nice jobs. Sure wish I could do two of them. Oh, uh, well. Oh, the Davies Garden. That one's a pretty good one. But uh, we're going to... Yeah, right, exactly. Maybe tomorrow. Um, I don't have to work tomorrow, so I shouldn't be quite so frazzled. But, um, yeah, we'll see if uh, maybe we'll do some more mowing uh, for that one. So let me switch back over to the uh, webcam focus. Dang it, I'm, I'm trying to think of any of the uh, jokes that I used to have. I don't know. This one's a little misogynistic, but... Uh, no, I better not tell that one. I better not tell that one. <laughs> there might be some ladies watching, <laughs> either here or on YouTube. Um, let's see, what else is there? Yeah, that one's. I mean, it's not bad, but it's 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 an old joke. Um, let's see. Oh, it's just it's just been so long. It's been so long since uh, since I've done any jokes. I used to I used to have like a whole routine of just you know one-liners and story jokes and everything and um, nah I just I can't think of it. Oh well, maybe one of these times I'll just write down a whole bunch of them when I'm just sitting here thinking and I'll just do like a joke hour or something like that. I don't know. Alrighty, well I have a lot of thanks that I need to uh, throw out here. First of all, R signs 90 thank you so much for hanging out here, and I do hope that you do get feeling better at some point. Uh, it's no fun being sick, and uh, it's just kind of, uh, but um, but I, uh, in spite of you being under the weather, I appreciate you hanging out and sharing some fun with me for the evening. It, it always makes it so much more fun when I've got uh, people hanging out, and not only hanging out, but engaging in the chat. It's it's always so much more fun. Uh, also got to give a shout out uh, to my other two uh, uh, repeat customers, uh, 0203 Brett and Danger Ranger 90 uh, three of some of my uh, bigger fans right at the moment. So it's always good seeing uh, uh, familiar faces and uh, uh, usernames and everything. So uh, that will do it for this evening. Uh, most likely we'll do a broadcast tomorrow at the same time. Uh, it will probably be another day of uh, mowing, uh, which is funny because tomorrow I have to mow for real. <laughs> It, we finally got a little bit of a break from some of the rainy weather, and we're going into the fall months here in Australia. Uh, so the grass isn't growing quite so fast, so I just I need to get out there and mow it at least one more time before the season officially comes to a close. Uh, and maybe during the winter, maybe once or so. Uh, I, I do kind of like that. We don't get the snow, but the grass kind of takes a bit of a break before the spring and the summer comes in and it just grows and I have to do it once a fortnight or even more. So, alrighty, well, uh, y'all have a great rest of the day. Again, our signs get feeling better and uh, hopefully uh, next time we chat, you're uh, at least on the upswing and on the mend. Uh, 
Uh, but until I greet you all again, y'all have a great rest of the day, and we will catch you next time.